guys, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Emily. Today we're going to be doing a full length Pilates reformer class called Wrap Your Glutes. As you can imagine, this is going to be a class that's dedicated to wrapping our glutes all the way from the sides around to the back of the glute. We're going to be incorporating the inner thigh, and really rotating our femur, our hip sockets when we turn out to Pilates V to incorporate our glutes as well. I have quite a few props. I have my skating platform, a sticky pad, a box, and then I'm also using the gondola pole today for when we do gondola for standing side legs. Uh, the gondola pole is longer than the regular Pilates fat bar. You could use a um, super long pole, such as the poles that are used for dusting high ceilings, if you have one of those around your house or something else. It is a safety feature if you're doing the exercises alone. To begin, I have my footwork springs on. For me, I use four springs, three heavies, one medium. That's three greens and one red on my machine. My headrest is lifted. You can use a cervical pillow if you prefer that. We are going to come down onto our backs to begin. I'm going to place my calves on the foot bar. I'm not grabbing onto the foot bar with the backs of my knees. I'm gently resting my calves with them and allowing my legs to, to come open to where they are most comfortable at this point. I'm focusing on the box of my body, from my hips up to my shoulders. I'm just finding a nice and neutral spine. Roll your shoulders back and down, bringing your arms to the side or up to a wide V if it helps you to really suction cut your shoulder blades to the mat. Go ahead and get a nice wide collarbone, a nice long loose neck. Grab your ribs in the front, sink them down in the back so all 12 ribs are connected. Get a slight lift in your low back between your 12th rib and your sacrum. Weight your sacrum from the backs of your hips to your tailbone. Don't pop into your tailbone though and lift your 12 ribs up. You should be equally weighted throughout the whole sacrum, allowing from hip bone to hip bone, your lower abdominals to sink down as if there's a hollow bowl there. Dropping your belly button to your spine, taking some nice deep breaths, really allowing your body to become comfortable with this position. Float your arms down to your side, flip your palms up to the ceiling if it helps you to suction up your shoulder blades. When you do that, make sure you're not popping your ribs, so really sink them down into the mat, allowing them to melt into the mat. Let's take one more deep breath. From there, we're going to inhale, exhale, using our abdominals to bring our feet up onto the foot bar. I have my arches on the foot bar closer to my heels so that I can pull in on the foot bar by pressing my feet down to activate my hamstring and my glutes already. So I'm not just passively placing my feet on, I'm pressing down and pulling in so that the carriage doesn't move. I'm going to go ahead and relocate my neutral spine, take my fingers and locate my 12th rib on my back at the mat. We're not going to bridge up any higher than this. This is just a low pelvic bridge to help engage our lower abdominals and warm us up for the day. We're going to go ahead and drop our head rest briefly, just in case we roll up a little higher. We want to protect our cervical spine. We do not want to roll up any higher. We want to really engage the glutes today. That's what we're going for. Glutes and lower abs tomorrow. So, fingers right here at the 12th rib. Inhale. Exhale. Tuck your tail. Bridge up to your 12th rib. Take a look at your knees. Make sure they're not going in or out. You want to keep the perfect number 11. Pull in with your hamstrings still. You should feel this strongly in your hamstrings and your glutes. Really begin to wrap your glutes around and pull up. Now articulate your spine down, keeping the same number 11. It requires activation of your inner thigh and your outer thigh muscles to keep that, the legs in the same position. And now exhale, still pulling down with my hamstrings. I didn't lose that the entire time. Bridge up to the 12th rib. Make sure you didn't go any higher. Good job, guys. The movement is intense, so it doesn't look like much. Articulate back down. Inhale, exhale, and lift. Pull down and in. Push down and pull in with your hamstrings. Push up with your glutes. Drop your belly down. Nice wide shoulder blades. Nothing's happening from the belly button up, really, guys. And articulate down. We're halfway there. We only have three more in this warm-up exercise. Press down, pull in, squeeze your glutes, 
wrap from the sides all the way around to the back. Really squeeze them on that smile line where you're pushing in your thigh knee. Make sure your legs are to number 11 and articulate down. Two more. After this, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of footwork. Really start to engage the glutes there as well. You should feel this a little bit tomorrow, hopefully. If you don't, good for you too. I hope you enjoy the workout though. I know that after I did this exercise to practice it the other day, I definitely felt it. Stay there, squeeze your glutes a little tighter. Make sure your legs are at perfect number 11. Suction, cut your shoulder blades up, pull in with your hamstrings, and articulate down. From there, I'm going to come onto my heels with my feet flexed back to my, my toe is uh, tracking, my knee is tracking over my big toe. There it is. I'm rotating my femur in the hip socket. I'm not allowing my legs to flop to the side. I'm squeezing them with my inner thigh. And I'm squeezing and I'm wrapping my glutes to rotate my femur in the hip socket. I'm going to inhale to press out using my glutes. Squeeze it up at the top. Pull up on the muscles, so tops and the kneecaps. And as I exhale, I'm going to resist the springs back in. And then I'm going to inhale to press out. And exhale to come back in. As I exhale, I allow my, my belly button to drop towards my spine. Nice wide shoulder blades. Still sinking my ribs into the mat. And for this fifth one, we'll pick it up and do it a little bit faster. But really pull up. We want to keep all the same elements there. So press through the glutes and pull up on the muscles on top of your knees and resist the springs back in. And pull up, squeeze together the other thighs, and resist. Here's three. And resist. And four, weight your sacrum on the way back in so you're not tucking your pelvis or tilting it to come back in. Here's five, come in halfway. And now using the glutes, pulse. Two, three, four. Small movement. Weight your sacrum, press out, pull up on your muscles, and come back in. Now, shake out your flex a little bit because we're going to stay in the flex position for footwork. I've separated my feet so that my heels are directly under my sits bones, but I'm lining up from big toe to knee to hip their sits bones. Now, as if we're standing up from a chair, we're going to squeeze our glutes, press it up, pull up on the muscles on tops of the kneecaps. We can still wrap our glutes and get a heavy glute usage here without the turnout. And press and squeeze. Use your inner thighs. Make sure your knees aren't hitting or they're flopping out to the side. I forgot to mention this earlier, guys. I'm so sorry. But if you would like, you can put your headrest back up if it makes it more comfortable for you. Sorry about that. Now we're going to speed it up. But don't forget to pull up and resist. And inhale. And exhale. Here's three. Four. Drop from hip to hip. And five. Sink your wrist. Come in halfway. Pulse from the glutes in one. Two, weight your sacrum. Make sure you're equally weighted and you're not tucking or tilting your neutral spine. Nine, ten, press out and come back in. Again, go ahead and point and flex your feet. Really shake out the fronts of the shins. We're going back into another flex foot position. Wide in a second position. We're wide Pilates feet. Heels on the edges of the foot bar. Pull up on your toes and press it out. Pull up on those muscles. Squeeze in on the inner thighs. Draw everything up towards the midline and resist it back in. And press and pull your muscles. And in. Here's four. And here's five. And now let's speed it up after this one. We're going to press out, but pull up and squeeze in and resist. And pull up and squeeze in, resist back in. And inhale and exhale. Inhale, nice white collarbone. And come in halfway. Now swiveling on your heels, bring your knees in towards each other and back out. If you're not feeling that, you're pressing out. 
You should feel it strongly in the inner thighs and the glutes. Try going in an inch or out an inch until you find that perfect spot. Sometimes it takes just a minute. Really activate. Really rotate the femur as you rotate in and rotate the femur in the hip socket as you come back out. Using the glutes to really move your thighs. Let's do three more. Here's nine. And one more for 10. Press it out, come back in. Now bring your feet up to the center. Squeeze your legs together. So if it's one giant leg leg, come up onto the balls of your feet in a four star steady point position, high heel position. We're gonna press it out. We're just going to drop our left heel under. Float your right leg off if you're comfortable and really get a nice stretch. Now press your foot, place your right foot back down. Come back up into the demi point position. Drop your right heel under. If you want to add on from there, float your left foot up into a tabletop position and really feel the nice stretch in your calf. Place your left foot back down back up to demi point. From there we're going to drop both heels under the foot bar and bend the knee, giving a heavy saber, neutral spine the whole time to come in. Come back into demi point when you're at the foot bar and press out, squeezing your glutes, wrapping them around. Keep that wrap the entire time you drop your heels under. Keep that wrap as you bend your knees to the foot bar and lift. direction, then we're going to reverse it for five. And come in. And now we're going to press up and press our heels under the foot bar. We're going to come up into a demi-point position and resist the spring so we come back in. Don't allow your knees to separate at any point during this exercise. Press under, your heels under and press out with your legs. Squeeze up and bend or resist back in. Bend the heels and straighten and demi point and bend into the foot bar. Press and lift and resist. And lower and press and lift and resist it back into the foot bar. Good job, guys. We're going to come up to sitting. We're going to do some one legged uh, glute work, sort of like a squat. I'm going to come to two heavy springs. My machine that is two rings. I'm going to come back down onto my back. I'm going to come uh, into a parallel position. I have both my legs squeezed together this time instead of separated slightly like we did in the footwork. I'm going to float my right leg up to a tabletop position. You don't have to flex it. You can do a gentle point on that, but flex your foot on the one-legged work. From here, we're going to press out, squeeze your glute, Lengthen up through the leg and come back in. And inhale. We're not going to go slower than fast on these. We're just going to inhale and exhale. Four and five, six. Really squeeze it on the glutes, squeeze it on your inner thighs. shift while you're pulsing. You don't want this hip to come up. You want to keep your sacrum completely stable. Good. Press it out and come back in. Place your right foot down. Flex your foot. Go ahead and lift your left foot up to tabletop. Don't allow your hips to shift. Keep a completely neutral spine. The box of your body should stay completely still. Squeeze your glutes to press out and come back in. Resist. And inhale, and exhale. So I'm shifting my foot a little bit. I didn't like my positioning on my body. And inhale, and exhale. Don't allow this leg to float off to this side. Keep it in a straight line, lined up with your other leg. Pull up on the 
muscles and hops the kneecaps. Here's 10. Come in halfway. And from the glute, pulse. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Press it out. Pull it or resist it back in. Bring your both feet down. Now turn out to Pilates feet. Again, keep some tension on your inner thigh. Don't allow your legs to just collapse to the side. Squeeze it on the outside, squeeze it on the inside. Float your right leg up to a tabletop frog position. Turn down to Pilates feet. You don't have to flex your foot here. Let's give it a little break. Squeeze in on your glute. Wrap your femur. Rotate it in the hip socket. Press out and come back in. Adjust your foot as you need to. And two. Make sure that both hip bones are staying equally grounded across the back. If you feel yourself starting to flop over to the working leg side, like they're doing more weight in that hip bone, try to bring your knee up slightly so that you can adjust your weight so that you're working equally and you're not twisting your back unnecessarily. And we're going to inhale. Exhale, come in halfway and we're going to pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Lots of pulsing today. Out and in. Mostly just on the arm, I promise. Replace your right foot. Float your left leg up to a turned out half frog tabletop Pilates sweep position. However, you're comfortable seeing it. Squeeze in on your glute. Make sure your hips don't shift. And press. Pull up on the muscles. And back in. But just as needed. Two. Make sure that you're equally weighted across the back. It's on the hip bones. Nice white collarbone, sinking your ribs into the mat. Dropping out from hip to hip. Good. Here's nine. And here's ten. So come in halfway. And pulse. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Press it out. Pull it back in. Place both heels down. Bring it wide. Show the wide second position on the heels. I'm going to take, I'm going to start with my right leg today, working my right leg so that you can see what I have going on with my left foot. I'm going to pop it into the forced arch position. I'm not trying to press into it a lot. I'm using it to stabilize my body so I don't shift off weight too poorly but I'm using the glute power to really press out. So my, my foot is very gentle on here. I could lift it off if I wanted to, but I want to use it for stability. So I'm going to press out, whoop, and I'm going to pull it back in. I'm not pressing into the ball of my foot necessarily. I'm a little bit on my toe. Just make sure that you're not using it to press out. You should be using just your right foot. Trying to stabilize the box of your body. Good. Making sure that you're equally weighted on both backs of the hip bones. Pull up on the muscle on top of your kneecap as you press out. Keep some inner thigh integrity here, guys, but really rotate the femur in the hip socket. Here's nine. And ten. Now come in halfway, and we're going to pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and press out. Ooh, my top of my head, just excuse me, and come back in. Now place the left heel on, flex in your foot, and do the light little Denny point, toe touch for stability with the right leg. And now activating your left glute, press out. Wrapping the femur in the hip socket, keeping both hips equally weighted. Here's three. And inhale. Pull up on the muscles. Here's five. And six. Here's seven. Reach down with your fingertips towards the foot bar to pull your shoulders away from the ears. Can you float your foot off to see? Make sure that you're using that left glute. Here's ten. Come in halfway. And pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Press it out. 
Pull it back in. Good job, guys. From there, we're going to go ahead and sit up. We're done with our footwork for today. We're going to be moving into some abdominal work. So, the spring tension that you use for hundreds, go ahead and put it on uh, your machine now. I use one medium, one light. That's one red and one blue on my machine. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have my strap, my handles on. I'm going to come onto my back. I'm going to bring my feet up to tabletop, squeeze my legs together. My arms are up over my head. I've already engaged my lats, so I'm not going to pull up into my neck. When I begin my curl ups, I'm going to inhale, exhale, pull my hands down to my knees for a flat lift in my head. And then I'm going to curl up, looking in my knees, drawing my wrists to my hips, creasing over my sternum to come up. I'm going to flip my fingers to the tops of my knees, and then I'm going to come back down. We're really activating by pulling down with our lats here, wrapping our ribs, and then we crease in our sternum to come up. Now float your hands up, still activating your, your um, box to your body, and lower. Let's do one more like this, and then we're going to add on. I'm going to reach my fingertips by pulling down with my lats, wrapping my ribs by the tops of my knees, and then I'm going to crease up. I'm going to flip my hands up to my knees, and then I'm going to lower my head, neck, and shoulders. Now from here, as I come down, I'm going to bring my fingertips towards my knees, but as I curl up, I'm going to extend my legs. I'm going to flex my feet in parallel, and I'm going to lift small walks, one foot over the other. It's three, four, curl up even deeper, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and now we're going to go five, four, walking up to the ceiling, three, two, one, walk down, two, three, four, five. Point your feet, draw them into tabletop, fingers to the tops of your knees, rest your head, neck, and shoulders. We're going to inhale, exhale, hands to knees, curl it up, extend. Turn your feet out to Pilates feet. We're going to do some ballet beats, clicking our heels for 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Up to the ceiling. Two, three, four, five. Back down. Two, three, four, five. Feet parallel. Draw your knees to the tabletop. Fingertips up. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale. Exhale. Reach for your knees. Curl it up. Extend your legs. Turn out to Pilates feet. Crisscross. Crossing at your thighs. Now your ankles are going to go one, two, three. See how I'm crossing at my thighs rather than my ankles to really engage my glutes. Nine, ten, and up to the ceiling. Two, three, four, five, and down. Two, three, curl up even deeper. Three, whoo, five, feet parallel, tabletop, and rest. Final curl up, guys. Ooh, inhale, exhale, and curl up and reach. Flex your feet, keep them parallel. Reach one leg up and switch. Giant walks, like scissors, but controlled. Use your abdominals to draw your foot in. Five, six, seven. Shoulders wide, eight. Crease up deeper. Feet down, draw your knees into tabletop, fingertips up, and lower down. Final curl up exercise, guys. I know you're excited, and then we're going to do some box work starting with Swan to really get some nice back extension. Inhale, exhale, fingertips to the tops of your knees, curl up, reach your feet up long, and begin pumping for hundreds. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale. Inhale. And exhale, really reach long towards the foot bar. Really wrap your glutes parallel or not and squeeze in on your inner thighs. <sighs> Draw your ribs towards your hips. <sighs> Make sure you're not crunching your chin to your chest or looking up at the ceiling. You want to look down, having a nice continuous curve from the tip top of your head up through your tailbone. Let's do two more. <sighs> Inhale and exhale. Two, three, four, five. Draw your knees into tabletop, fingertips touch your knees, rest your head, neck, and shoulders with control. 
Place your feet down on the footboard. Walk them out. You've got a windshield wiper. Your shins, allowing one hip to pop up gently. Don't crank it up and crank in your back though. Try to leave your ribs on the mat. Good job, guys. We're going to be moving on to some box work. So let's go ahead and come up to sitting. We are going to go ahead and change our spring tension to one red and one blue. So actually, we're just going to leave it. I'm sorry. Then I'm going to place my box in the long box position in the middle of my machine. Force one. You can place your sticky mat down on the mat or down on your box in the middle. Maybe towards the middle of the front. I'm going to place one hand on my foot bar, other hand on my foot bar. Swing one leg up and around, other leg up and around. I'm going to place where my 12th rib of my uh, sternum meat or my bra strap on the very front edge of my box. I'm going to squeeze it on my inner thighs, squeeze it on my glutes to float my legs up slowly. I don't want to be hot tended up on my hips. I want to be squeezing my glutes and my hamstrings. To really continue on with the, with the spirit of this routine, I'm going to draw my shoulders up and down. Have my nose across the foot bar, so I'm in this neutral spine as possible. I'm press out on one. Use my last one shoulder break. And on two. Really draw your belly up to your spine. Keep a squeeze on your glutes and inner thighs. And press out. And come across. And press out. On one. Lift up on two. Shoulders away from your ears. And on three. And then on four. If you have a mirror nearby, go ahead and press up. Pull up. Take a look over at the mirror. Make sure that you have an equal curve or a nice uh, consecutive curve. You would take up your head out, rear tail, and raise your head to in your neck to look up to come up and spawn. Let's do two more. And press. And lift. If you feel your ribs catching or kickstanding as you come down, you're flaring them out to get a little higher, most likely. And so I'm going to keep them wrapped the whole time. You're going to find that it restricts your swan a little bit. But they're going to be more supported across your back. And come back in. From there, I'm going to come off to the side so that I can remove my sticky mat. From there, I'm going to come down onto my side in a bent knee position. If you are unable to do this, you can come right here and do a modified mermaid position. Otherwise, we are going to do a modified scar position on our knee with a side bend. Make sure that your knees are not hanging off the front of your box because you could eat it and fall off your box and that would be unfortunate. I have my right hand on the foot bar. My knees are pointed to the uh, uprights. I have stacked them on top of each other. My left hand is on top of my knee shin area with my palm flipped up to the ceiling. I'm engaging my lats, pulling in, bringing the carriage to the foot bar just like we did and the opening 12th rib bridge work exercise where we pulled the carriage into the foot bar with our hamstrings. We're doing the same thing with our lats, underneath our arms, down the sides of our ribs. And then I'm going to inhale, exhale, drop my belly in, begin to squeeze my glutes, actively lift my legs, and reach up and over, bringing my bicep by my ear, wrapping my ribs, drawing my shoulder down, and I'm going to squeeze my glutes as I hinge at the hips again, to sit back and lower down. Inhale, exhale, squeeze the glutes. Pull in the inner lats and pull your shoulder away from the ear. Keep the carriage of the foot bar and lift. Lifting up out of my side, I'm supported here. I'm opening up here. I'm stretching out on both sides, not crunching on my side closest to the foot bar. One more and squeeze my glutes to press my hips forward as I lift. Good job, guys. We're going to come off the box again. I'm going to change over to my foot straps. If you have double uh, double loops on, obviously you don't need to do this. Otherwise, go ahead and do it. We're going to come into a quadruped exercise. So I'm going to go ahead, put my foot bar down. If you don't want to do that or if it doesn't bother your foot, please feel free to leave it. Please hold hands up. Clamp up onto the box. I'm working my right leg first. I'm going to walk my left knee a little bit closer in the middle. 
I'm going to have a slight bend in my elbow, so I'm not popping up into here. I want nice wide shoulder blades, but I don't want to sink. I want to keep a neutral spine, wrapping my ribs, pulling, think of pulling the box of heart, so that your shoulder blades are flat and wide. I'm going to place one, my right foot down on the machine, pull, this, oh, I'm sorry, that is a little heavy for that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop my light spring, so I have one medium spring on. On my machine, I drop my blue, which is my light, I left my medium on, which is my red. So, back to the position, I grab my strap, pull it down, place it over my foot, come down into the quadruped position, adjust where needed. Make sure that your shoulders are over your wrists, your hip is uh, over your knee, you're not popping your shin off, you wanna leave it firmly into the box, you want to square your hips, square your shoulders, and pull back and up. But don't splay your hip out. We want to keep both hips square. We're working in parallel. And lower. Abs up and in. Squeeze your glutes, lift really higher. Don't pop up into your low back. Here's five. We're going to go to eight. And exhale. Inhale. Hold that box apart and flatten your shoulder blades. Draw your ribs in. Nice long neck. Stay up on eight and pulse up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, bring your foot out two inches. Bring it back behind you. Bring it back to your other hip two inches. But don't wag your tail. Don't shift your hips. Just move your toes away from the center and across the center. Can you lift your leg a little higher? Square your hips and shoulders a little bit more. Six. Seven. Really a lot of glute work. Here's eight. Bring your foot right back behind you. Five small circles in each direction, the sides of an orange. One, two, three, four, five, and reverse. Two, square off, four, five, and now float your leg back down with control. Place your foot back up on the carriage. Carefully remove the strap and allow yourself to come back into the carriage slowly and with control. From there, you guessed it, we're going to the other side. So, I'm going to place my right knee back on. I'm going to walk my right knee towards the center. Bring my left foot to the side of the carriage so I can reach down for the left foot strap. Pull it in. Place it on my foot. Carefully place my hand back on the box. Adjust so my shoulders are over my wrists. My hip is over my knee. Using my glutes, I'm going to square up my shoulders and my hips. Pull it back and up. One side is always harder than the other one. My left glutes are definitely weaker than my right ones, guys. You definitely feel it over here. And abs up and in. Seven and eight. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to eight. We're going to hold it back and then we're going to pulse up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Away two inches, pull behind you and towards your other hip two inches. Don't forget, don't wag your tail. The carriage will move very little, if any at all. Square your hips. Square your shoulders, drop on your abs, don't sink in your low back like Pooh Bear. Pull the box apart to flatten your shoulder blades. And eight. Bring your foot behind you, five small circles the size of an orange, each direction on one, two, three, four, five, and five, four, three, two, one. Float your foot down with control, bring it back onto the carriage. Remove the strap, allow the carriage to come in slowly with control to the bumper. Replace your strap. We are going to come down to the other side for the modified start. Or mermaid, if it's hard on your knees, you can hang both knees off to the side. Leave them on the carriage, not on the wood, so you don't scrape. We're going to come down, bring our foot bar back up. 
the place that light springs. So we're on one medium, one light spring on my machine. Again, that's one red, one blue. I'm going to I'm sitting on, on the box. I'm not going to allow my knees to hang off the edge of the box. I'm going to place them on the box. I'm going to bring my hand in front of my body on the floor. That's my left hand. I'm going to uh, bring my right hand on top of my shin knee area. Palm up. Pull in on my lats. Already engaging down this side. So they keep the carriage in as a bumper. And I'm going to lift up, squeezing my glutes. Bring my bicep up by my ear. Lifting up out of this side. Not crunching on this side. Lengthening on both sides. And I'm going to lower. And inhale, exhale. Squeeze your glutes and lift. And reach. And hinge at your hips to lower. Let's do one more. And Drawing our abs up and in, wrapping our ribs, shoulders down, nice long neck, and come down. Good. Carefully step off to the side of your machine. From there, we're going to go into a short box position. We're going to change the springs again to one medium spring, one right spring, and I'm going to drop my foot mark. If you would like, you can place your sticky mat on top of the platform on the end, or place your standing platform in for this, but do not hook your toes over the edge. That's not what we're trying to work here. We're trying to work the back of the leg, not the front by hooking our toes. I'm going to come down onto my forearms in a quadruped position. My hands are roughly right over my shoulder block, so I'm crunching in or I'm not out too far on my body. I'm drawing my abdominals up and in, just like we were in the, the quadruped position on the top of the box. I'm going to hover my knees off. I'm going to press out to plank and come back in, hovering my knees and press. My feet are separated, so my heels are under my sits bones. And here's three. And rotate your knees to the right side and press out and pull back in. Squeezing your glutes and inner thigh root to do it. Don't sink. Lift up out of your left side. Come back through center. We're going to do three plank push-ups here. One. Pull apart so that you're not, you're not rounded up in your shoulder blades. And come back in. Now rotate your knees to the left. Squeeze your glutes and your thighs to press out on one. And in. Wrap your ribs. Draw your lower abdominals in. And here's 30. Okay, guys, we're gonna head back to center. Give me three more in the center, and then we're gonna do a little rest stretch activity before we move on. And squeeze and come back in. When the bumper comes in, when your carriage comes to the bumper, go place your knees down, bring your shins down. Staying in the forearm position, we're going to go ahead, tuck our tail, tuck our head. Come up into a modified cat position, looking into our shin. Now that's just you know, allowing our glutes to pop to the back. We're going to squeeze our glutes and come up into a cow position without allowing our booties to come back like this. We still want to maintain glute connection. And now squeeze your glutes to press on forward, opening up your hips as you come into the cat. And now come into the cow. Lifting your tail, lifting your head. Squeeze your glutes, tuck your tail, tuck your head so your glutes don't go all the way back to the foot bar. Looking at your thighs. Come back down. And lift. Okay, guys, look. We're going to do this next series with our hands on the, uh, with our palms on the box. If you're not comfortable with this or if you have shoulder issues or if you're more comfortable with your hand, with your forearms, on the box, please do the series that we just did. Otherwise, we're going to be moving on. And for those of you who have too much on your shoulders already, please feel free to do more cat cows or come into a child's pose. So from here, I'm going to bring my hands to roughly the center of the box. They're going to be roughly in line with my shoulder, um, with my uh, shoulder blocks again. My feet are separated, so my heels are under my sit bones. I'm going to roll my shoulders up, back and down, engage my lats, draw my ribs together, 
draw my abs up and in, squeeze my glutes and hover my knees. I'm gonna press out. My shoulders are gonna stay over my wrists the whole time for control. And bring it back in. And press and pull. And press and pull. Now, I'm gonna press. I'm gonna carefully walk my left hand to my right hand. The weight's not too heavy, so we're doing okay. I'm gonna bring my hand up to the side in a start position. I'm going to hike my hips and thread the needle. I'm not rotating my feet in, but if you need to come up to your, up to your toes, you're welcome to, or you stay on your foot. But we're not rotating our feet. Now I'm coming into a center pike. And here's three. Draw the carriage in and out. And now I'm going to place my right hand down, move my left hand back out, and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to press out on one, and in, and two, and three. Stay out. Slide your right hand in closer. Rotate to the side. Bring your left arm up in a star position. We have that length in the, in the side just like we did on the long box exercise. We're going to pick and thread the needle and come back up to star. Squeeze your glutes. Draw your inner thighs together. Whoop. Keep your shoulder over your wrist, guys. And come back out. And now I'm going to place my left hand down. Come back through center. Slide my right hand back out. Bend my knees. Press out to a plank. Squeeze my glutes and in. And press. And come back in. And press. Now come back in. When the carrot stretches the bumper, place your knees down and release your feet to flat. We're going to cat cow one more time. I'm going to lift my tail to my head. If you felt like this was a better, pull your shoulders back down. If you feel like this better on the forearms, you're welcome to do it there. Tuck your tail, tuck your head. Look down. Squeeze your glutes so your hips don't go behind you. Still squeezing, coming up into the, the uh, cow. Tuck your tail, tuck your head. Angry cat. Lift your tail, lift your head. Keep your glutes forward by squeezing them. Otherwise, they'll go all the way back here, guys. We don't want that. And tuck your tail, tuck your head. Good. Come back to center. Carefully come off to the side. I'm going to remove our box. We're going to leave our headrest down or put it down if it's not already down. I'm going to lift my bar up to the middle. I'm going to place my one light spring back on. So I have one medium, one light, one red, one blue on my machine. I'm going to come down onto my back. Again, double check your headrest. Make sure it's down. We're going to go into bridging. I'm going to come down. I'm going to come into parallel. My heels are going to be no wider than my sits bones. My arms are going to be reaching long down by my sides. I'm flat from all the way down my arms, but I'm not popping into my ribs. I'm going to use my hamstrings to pull in, just like we did on that opening bridging exercise. Over the bridge, all the way up to our shoulder blades. Make sure that your knees aren't going in or out. We want them to be parallel, perfect number 11 still. And we get to articulate back down, pulling the carriage into the bumper. This is the most difficult spring tension to do it on, but we have been working our legs this whole time, so it does feel quite difficult. Personally for me, my feet are in the same position they were for the beginning light bridging exercise, we'll call it, where we only went to the 12th rib. They're right uh, at the arch of the foot where the, the heel meets the arch. I find it gives me more control with my hamstrings with pulling the carriage in. Now staying up, squeeze your glutes, press it out. You'll notice that your hips drop slightly here when you straighten your legs a little bit, and then press them up as you come back in. Using your hamstrings, your hips will drop slightly, and then they'll lift. Leave your feet in the perfect number 11, and in. You want a straight line from your knees to your hips to your shoulders, and articulate down. Whew. Now, we're going to come into a Pilates V position, leaving our feet still at where the arch and the heel meet. This is a modified semi-circle. My trainer, Katie, loves to give us in class. We're going to use our hamstrings. 
to pull our knees over the foot bar, pulling the carriage in. So we're going to tuck our tail and articulate up, pulling our knees across. From there, we're going to press out. We're going, our heel, hips are going to drop slightly, and then we're going to articulate our spine down to the mat, to neutral. We're going to bend our knees, resist the carriage in. And then we're going to tuck our tail, use our hamstrings to pull our knees across the foot bar. And then we're going to press out, tuck our tail, and make it down to the mat. And come back in. Nice articulation, a nice exercise. Throughout all this work, we're still squeezing our glutes to lift our hips. Tuck your tail and lower. And come in using our hamstrings. And now we're going to reverse. We're going to press out, squeezing our legs together. Tuck your tail, lift using your glutes. Pull in, curling your hamstring, or pull your knees across, lift your hips a little higher. Articulate down using your hamstrings to stand at the bumper and press out. Tuck your tail and lift. Hamstring curl, pull across. Stay in there. Ooh, tuck your tail and lower. Let's do one more. And then it's time for my favorite bridge, because I think it's the nicest bridge. Tuck your tail and lift. Try to go from a straight line from your ankles to your hips, to your underarms. Rotate your femur in the hip socket. Use your hamstring pull across and articulate down. From there, we're gonna come out. Same position on our feet. Wide second position or wide Pilates V position. Right where the heel and, and the arch meet. Placing our feet on there. Making sure that we have integrity in our inner thighs or activeness in our inner thighs and our outer thighs. We're going to keep pulling in the carriage with our hamstrings. Tuck our tail and lift. Again, straight line from our knees to our hips to our underarms. Articulate down. I feel like this bridge feels the best. I feel like, I almost feel like they compared to the other one. It's such a nice, a nice relaxing break. <laughs> We're going to articulate down. We have one more. Tuck your tail and lift. Ooh, keep it pulled in. Not like me. And press out. Your, your uh, hips will drop slightly. Now squeeze your glutes to lift as you hamstring curl. And press out. And lift with your glutes. And here's three. Press out. Wrap your ribs. And lift. And now articulate. Down, 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 down. Good job, guys. Come up to sitting. We're going to go ahead and get some other props. We're going to stand on one red, one blue. We're going to go ahead and lower our foot bar. Uh, we're going to be doing some side controls. So I'm going to add my standing platform. I'm going to lower my foot bar all the way. I'm going to place my sticky mat on my standing platform because as we've all seen in class before, I slip on it. I'm going to locate my gondola pole. Keep it handy. So I'm going to put mine right here in my foot bar. It's not going to be in my way, but it's going to be right there. If you cannot get up onto your machine by stepping up onto the standing platform before placing your foot on the carriage with no assistance, please do not do this series of exercises. I'm going to place one foot on my standing platform, squeeze my glutes to press up, and place my other foot which is my left foot, right at the edge. I'm gonna squat down, guys, leaving my legs in the number 11, hinging at my hips, placing my hands on my sacrum, I'm press out and in. I'm only going to aim two, three. My weight's in my standing platform leg. Squeeze your glutes. Six. Ooh, this is hard after all this work, huh? And here's eight. And now we're gonna put our weight in our carriage leg, which for me is my left leg, and I'll press out and in. This is the most difficult line. Ooh, moving the carriage. Ooh, my, my booty does not wanna work anymore. So I'm gonna really squeeze in, really draw into my low back, really engage my inner thighs. And here's eight. Good. From there, I'm gonna come up to standing. I'm going to rotate my feet out. I'm going to walk my foot out to the center of my carriage. I'm going to take my gondola pole, place it in the center of my body. I'm not holding onto it for dear life. I'm going to squat down in a wide second position with my knees tracking over my big toe. And I'm going to straighten my carriage leg and bend it. 
Only my carriage leg is moving. I'm rotating my femur in the hip socket the whole time. I'm still using a lot of glutes here, guys.
Make sure your knees are tracking over your big toes. Shoulders down. And here is eight. Come back into the gondola position. And now straighten both legs. And then don't tuck or tilt your pelvis. I know it's getting harder, right? Three. Four. Two more. Pull apart the foot bar. And final one. 
and come back in. So now come up and stand. We're moving into the stretching portion of our class. I'm going to remove the red spring. When we do the psoas stretch today, we're not going straight into an eaves lunge where our booty and our tailbone go to the back of our head. We're squeezing our glutes the whole time. It's going to be very restricted. So I'm going to line up my big toe with the front of my machine. I'm going to bring my left foot, tucking my toe, bring my heel to shoulder block, and I'm going to connect my knee to the carriage. I'm going to use my lats to pull in. From there, I'm going to squeeze my glute to press my hip forward to open it up. And instead of thinking of sending the carriage back, I'm going to think of sending my hips straight down, my body, the box of my body squeeze straight down. I feel an intense stretch. My carriage has not moved that much. And I'm going to come back up. I'm squeezing my glutes strongly. And I'm going to sink. Think of sinking straight down. We're going to lift. And let's do one more. And sink. Now lift your left arm or your right arm up to the side. Lift it up to your ear. And side bend without pushing the carriage back, but sink lower. Now come back up. The side bend is not feeling like normal with either. It's not as loosey goosey today. Place your hand back down and come back up. We're going to come to the other side. Normally, the stretch is just for feeling great when we do this stretch. And we're like, yes, just press out the carriage. But today, we're really working on the glute strength. I'm going to line my left foot toes up the front of the wood, tuck my toes on the carriage, place my knee down, use my lats to hold the carriage in, and then squeeze my glutes. Draw my abdominals up and in, protect my low back, and then I'm going to sink. Ooh, this side's a lot tighter than my other side for my hips. For my psoas. And then come back up. And then I'm just going to sink, squeezing my glutes to open up that right front of my hip to really get in that deep psoas stretch. And up. And one more. And I'm not pressing away from where my, my knee is. It's staying in the same place. I'm going to float my left arm up by my ear. Side arm pressing into the foot bar with my right hand so that I don't sink into my right side. Come back up. Place my hand down. Pull the carriage back in. I'm going to come to sitting on the side of the machine. I'm going to take my left foot. I'm going to cross it. Cross above my ankle, below my calf, over my knee so I'm not stickling my foot. I'm going to open my knee wide to the side. Sit straight up. Equal weight in both my sit bones. Inhale, floating my hands up. Don't pop your ribs. And I'm going to hinge forward. Reaching for the wall and the ceiling in front of me. <sighs> Inhale here. And round over your leg. Take another nice deep inhale. I exhale. Articulate back up to sitting. Head come to blast. Switch your feet. Cross your right above your ankle, below your calf, over your left knee. Press your right knee down so that it's not popping up like this. We really want to get into that, that hip stretch. Nice figure four stretch. Float your arms up, wrap your ribs. Hinge forward. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, round over your legs. Take a nice deep inhale here. And the exhale. Articulate up to sitting. Bring both feet down. Separate your legs so that your, your uh, toes are on, your big toes are in line with your knees, are in line with your sits bones. Make sure your legs are nice, number 11. They're nice and even. Go ahead and take a deep inhale. And exhale. Thank you so much for joining me for class today. If you have any questions about any exercises or modifications, please let me know, and I hope you have a great day.